Hey, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in southwestern Ontario, Canada, and I want to welcome you to my Wednesday afternoon live. I'm early, so give me a moment. I am just going to bring you up on my devices. Um, and we're going to give it a moment to uh, let everybody get here. So hold on just one moment while I bring you up on my iPad so that I can see. Okay. And I've got my volume off. So um, there we go. Uh, so please say hello when you join me. Let me know where you're coming from. I love to hear from you. Um, it is a rainy, misty, kind of foggy uh, day here in southwestern Ontario. I hope the weather is a little brighter for you wherever you are watching me from. Um, even if you're watching the replay, please say hello. And don't forget to uh, click that subscribe button, the notification bell, as well as give me a thumbs up. Um, hello, Sylvie from New Zealand. <clears throat> Welcome. Um, I'm so glad that you are here. Today we are going to be creating with the um, North Pole Mischief. I know that's backwards. Oh, I can see when I, <laughs> my screen, I can see the mess behind me. <laughs> it is a disaster back there. Hello, Amy. Uh, yeah, today, um, I had some trouble trying to figure out what to create for you guys because I was going through on the site um, what was still available from the last chance list. That is the mini catalog that, is that the one that's right here? Yes. Um, this catalog here, so many things are, <clears throat> excuse me, are sold out. Um, I wanted to do a cute um, snowman card, but he's gone. Uh, the Scotty dog is gone. So <laughs> I was like, okay, what is still available? The um, There's papers gone as well. So that's why I always say, um, make sure you get what you want right off the get-go. Because if you wait for it to be on sale, you might not get it. Uh, so... Uh, North Pole Mischief was not on low inventory yet and uh, was still available. So I thought, all right, that's what we're doing. <laughs> so let's flip you around here so that we can see my desktop. All right. Give me just one moment. This is old school um, with my Archon mount and then i'm gonna have to adjust my light my uh lighting as well and there's something scooch over there yeah because of the weather it is very dark in here uh my christmas list um included from my hubby I he said what would you like and I said well there's nothing really because you know you get to a certain age that you buy everything you want anyways <laughs> but I said I would love one of those standing ring lights um maybe a new overhead light in there well, let's see here for my craft room here all right so um if you're in Canada and don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator that you're currently working with, I would love the opportunity to earn your business. Please use this month's host code when shopping in my online store. Now, before we get to today's adorable card, I just want to say that I have two sets of the, uh, or one set of the trees for sale my class to go, it includes the Trees for Sale stamp set, the Tree Lot dies, um, the supplies for five projects, a PDF with videos. It is $55 for porch pickup or uh, add $20 to that to be shipped anywhere in Canada to you. So if you're not local, 
it is $75. That gets you five projects, the stamp set and the dies. That's a pretty awesome deal. So I have one of those left. And I have one kit of the caroling mice uh, class to go as well. So this one is <clears throat> $45 if you're local, uh, $65 if I need to send it to you anywhere in Canada. It includes the stamp set. This is a host stamp set. So it includes the stamp set, uh, half a package of the masking paper, three a package of the three blending brushes, one blender pen, and the supplies for six cards as well as the PDF with the embedded videos. So please let me know if you would like either one of these two fabulous um, classes that are ready to go. All right, and I have my fireplace on down here. So now I have to take my cardigan off because it's a little toasty in here. <laughs> so, all right, so today's card. Oh my gosh, this is so adorable. And then I've just got a couple paw prints on the inside. I love this stamp set. It is so cute. These little critters have such attitude shining through um, the image. This, this cute little girl, she is so proud of herself for wrapping up that kitty cat. And that kitty cat is certainly not impressed. So I already went ahead and used my um, 3D embossing folder. This is uh, the Snowflake one from the Wintery 3D embossing folders. Hello, Amy, and hello, Marina, right here from right here in Strathroy. Okay, so you will notice um, this embossing folder, it's a mini one meaning it doesn't cover your entire cardstock. However, because this middle part is um, tucked in behind, see that line right there? It is, um, I'm not worried that it is right there because my image is gonna be covering it. So the way you do that, I didn't want to bring my big bulky um, stamp and cut emboss machine in. Um, what you're going to do is you are going to line this up like so and run it through your um, stamp and cut emboss machine. Then let me grab the plate to show. All right. I have my, my machine is actually in the other room, my classroom, I have a class tonight. So everything is set up out there. So um, as you can see, it fits like this. You always want to put your embossing folders, the uh, spine through first, so you avoid um, damaging that embossing folder. So once you've done that, all you have to do is line it up on that line that the de demarcation line um, and line it up so it's nice and straight and you can see as long as you have not gone over you can see that we're going to have that um, line right in the middle but you can see that it is right to the edge of that embossing the specialty plate so you're going to run that through the second time and as long as this is not over top it's not going to out extended it's not going to smush it up in your machine so you can easily get a full four by five and a quarter piece um, embossed and like I said I'm not concerned about that if this was your main um, focal point um, you, and you weren't having a big piece of uh, cardstock over top even just a piece of ribbon would cover that demarcation line easy peasy all right, so let's uh, get stamping right away because this has to have a moment to dry. So we have thick basic white cardstock. And because we are coloring, we're using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. This is water-based. 
um, ink because we are using our Stampin' Blends, which are alcohol-based. And when it's a bigger stamp, I like to take my ink pad and bring it to the stamp rather than bringing the stamp to the ink pad. And those ears, I find, don't want to um, get a nice, even dark color. So there we go. So we are going to line that up and now hopefully I do okay with my coloring when I've got my phone and that right in front of me as um, I have to get so close because they are pretty tiny little areas to be coloring in between those ribbons and that. There we go, move that to the side. I also um, already heat embossed my sentiment. So this is the way the sentiment comes. However, I wanted to um, cut it up and move it around. I think it just adds a little bit more personality to the card. So we're gonna leave this for a moment and we are going to, um, fold and burnish our base. Now all of the measurements, so you can recreate this with this set or with any other set that you might have. Oh, I'm just looking up here. Marina, you just finished making the mice cards. They were a lot of fun to make. Awesome. Those of you that are watching and are Canadian, see Marina is a happy um, class attendee. She took my class, it's a class to go. And she had a lot of fun um, creating the cards. All right, so all of the measurements can be found on my blog. About 10 minutes after I'm done, I will insert the, um, the blog post address. I will insert the link in, oh, I don't have my glue out, yes I do. Um, the link in my um, description box. So we've got our base. We've got our embossed piece. So like I said, this is four by five and a quarter. This is four and an eighth by five and three eighths. But you don't need to rush to get all of these measurements because they are gonna be found on my blog post um, as well as the all of the um, supplies that I used. As we come to the end of the holiday catalog, uh, things sell out and are no longer available. So it makes it kind of tricky for us um, demonstrators who bring you um, content to decide what to create with that uh, you can still purchase. All right, so. Make sure we are the right way there. I was assembling some paper pumpkin cards last night and <laughs> I glued the stuff on upside down. See, we all do it. I've been making cards for 20 years now. <laughs> and I put, I put my um, image, I put it on like this. Thank goodness I was able to, um, I used dimensional, so I was able to <laughs> peel it off. My goodness. Okay, so let me just there, adjust that. All right, next up, I have a piece of the um, white glittered organdy ribbon. And I thought it would be fun to add just that little bit of sparkle to my card. This one is a little longer than uh, the original, but that's okay. I'm just using up scraps that I have laying around here and there. And so this is um, seven eighths of an inch by four and a half inches. So I'm taking my stamp and seal. You don't want to use glue on ribbon because it kind of bunches it up and it seeps through and it makes it a yucky mucky mess. So I'm going right in the middle and as long as you can drag it fair, well, we're getting a little, 
We're getting a little wavy, but hopefully it'll be okay. As long as you can drag it fairly straight down. And then put your ribbon right on top. And look at that. It's attached. So next we're going to take some glue. Now I am not done my Christmas cards. I haven't even started to sit down and fill in an address other than um, my team that there's a pit, bit of glue or the adhesive right there. So I'm switching other than my team um, my that are coming, my first levels that are coming to my, our, um, Christmas social on Saturday. Um, that's it. I have a bunch to get done, get mailed. All right, so I'm just going to take my adhesive remover. Stampin' Up! used to sell these. They don't anymore. Um, I included one of these with my Saturday soiree, the February edition this past year. Everybody got their own. You can get these from um, Amazon. I think the dollar store sells them. But there, that just cleaned that um, glue right up. All right, so let's take... And instead of going down the bottom... We don't need that there. Let's take... <clears throat> Instead of just doing the two, let's take our footprints and we are going to, <clears throat> excuse me, I've got a frog in my throat and that didn't stamp so good, that one. Neither did that one. We're going to take and have our little paw prints going off the bottom. Now, if you're concerned about that, if you've got the um, black Stampin' Blends, I'm going to take the light basic black and I am just going to fill that in ever so carefully. Just like that, so that it's not quite so glaring. Use a feather light touch for it. And here, just so that it's not quite, There we go. That looks so much better. And I'm using the brush tip so that it's not there. I I'm totally okay with that. And you see how easy that was to take that. Hmm, it's not quite so stamped nicely to wow, that looks good. So there we have that. We are going to put that on the inside of our card. Hello, Jeannie. Oh, your caroling mice arrived this morning. Nice. And Dan enjoyed the cookie. Awesome. I love to hear that, that somebody enjoyed one of the treats that I sent. Okay. So there we have that. So now let's get to coloring. And like I said, this has got, this is going to be a little, <clears throat> a little time consuming and a little, I've got my, my color lifter on the ready. All right. So let's start with the dog and my dog's ear on my original is a little different as I colored with a different marker 
and didn't like how it turned out. So I color lifted it <laughs> and changed it. So, um, yeah, I'm also not so fussy on the, the, um, collar here. All right. Um, would I say the paw prints can be kitty prints? Absolutely, Amy. You bet. They're, um, paw prints are paw prints. They can totally be a kitty footprint. So I'm coming in with my light crumb cake. And then I'm going to go right over that blushed cheek. You know how sometimes their cheeks are a little lighter and that's a little bright. So if you come in and that's going to change that tone a little bit. And sometimes their chests, their tummy area is white, but we're just going to color it all in. We're not going to get all fancy. Yeah, I wanted this to be a girl dog. I was thinking of my sister, my sister, <laughs> my daughter's dog, <clears throat> Buffy. She's a cutie, and she, um, in her younger days, this is something I could see her totally doing, getting into mischief. So I'm just coming in, adding some dark areas, and then I will bring it out a bit with the uh, light all right just going over that line being careful not to <clears throat> oversaturate because that's when you get the bleeding happening. Just being so careful in those tight, small areas. And I'll look up in a second for any comments. So I'm looking at revamping some things in my business in the new year. <clears throat> I'll be posting a questionnaire type on my Facebook business page, Stampin' with Marcy, as well as I will uh, be sending out a um, newsletter asking people's opinions. Okay, let's go in to these dark areas first. So this is, um, I want this all dark. This is shaded spruce. And this teeny tiny, there we go. Um, asking people's opinions on classes. What type of classes would you like to see? I am back to doing in-person classes. I do I will continue to do my virtual and I've added in the in-person. 
So I want to know what type of classes would you like? So when I do send it out, it'll be next week because I have class tonight. I have class tomorrow morning. Then I have my teen Christmas social on Saturday. And on Sunday, we're doing my daughter's family birthday because her birthday is on Tuesday. And um, <clears throat> Brad and I will do something with her on Tuesday, but the some family members are unable to do Tuesday evening, working late. So we're going to be doing Sunday. Oops, and I just went outside the line. I can't talk and color at the same time. So we'll be looking for that. Those of you that have taken the Saturday soiree, I've done two of them now. It's a to-go type. Um, I want to know, did you enjoy it? Would you like me to do another one? Another one of my questions is paper shares. I stopped doing them because I only had one person interested. So if people want, I will do paper shares again. All right. Almost done the box. Okay. It's so hard to get in to some of these areas. There we go. And let's just come to there. Feather that line out. It's very difficult to get into some of these areas. Um, now this is going to be red here, so let's take our color lifter and push that green back and then there. All right. So if you take <clears throat> your color lifter and you know you're going to be coloring again uh, on that area, just blow on it to dry it. Um, to give it a moment to dry. Um, okay, so let's see here. What do we have? The light and the dark red. All right, let's see. Uh, Amy says, woohoo, team, a sassy holiday get together. Yes, I am very excited. Now my pre-order hasn't arrived yet with my uh, team prizes for the fun couple games we're going to play, but <laughs> um, we'll have fun anyway. <laughs> so... And oh, hello, Danny. My daughter Danny's here. Yes, it's her birthday next week. So, uh, yeah, she hasn't told us. At least I haven't checked our family chat today. Um, what we're doing. We're a big dinner and a movie family. We always have been. Brad and I love the movies. But it always depends on what's what's playing. This is light real red that we're using. Oh, and I 
just did it again. I'm trying to be quick. Let's take a moment and clean that up a smidge. There, I think that should be okay. Just kind of push it back a little bit. turning so that it's right in front of me. Okay, almost done this part here. I hold my breath <laughs> when I'm really close. Do you guys do that? Hold your breath when you're doing something you're really concentrating on? Or am I the only weirdo that does that? And I wanna bring in my dark real red, just a little bit to add a little bit of depth to my ribbon because that's just a it's just flat so if we come in and add just some dark I don't even know if I'm in camera view when I'm pulling it. So quiet, I do apologize, but this is detailed and I don't want to mess it up. Oh, look at that, I missed two strands. Oh my goodness, <laughs> okay. Well, we're gonna come in and we're just going to very lightly, we're not doing a lot of blending, we're just lightly covering that line so that there's no harsh separation. You don't need to do a whole ton of blending, blending, blending. Just want to soften that line ever so slightly. 
And now let's color in the rest of this. Silly me. But this way you can see, see the difference with that, how just adding that little bit of the dark just makes it really um, pop and look more vibrant. And then come in. There we go. All right. Now let's color in our kitty cat. That's crumb cake. We're not having a crumb cake cat or cat. Yeah, that's right. We're having a gray granite cat. Um, let's see. You love the cute how it is on the card uh you love the bow uh you hold your breath too amy all right <laughs> and christy says it's pretty normal at times yeah i just i don't know how it it helps me focus <laughs> it's like when you get to a certain age and you're concentrating on finding an address when you're driving and you turn the music down so you can concentrate better um i think that's really funny but i that i do that i think it's and i think it's once you get to a certain age the loud music is distracting At least for me, it is. My kids think it's funny. I started doing that. I'd be like, shh, shh. I'm trying to concentrate. All right. So we are all gray. However, she's pretty flat looking. So... We're going to come in and we want this tail darker. Bring that around. And then in this area here, the little bum. And the forehead of this really unimpressed cat. And then in this area because we are kind of shadowy in there. All right. Now let's bring in our light. Land that line out. And this one here. Have you guys started your Christmas baking? Do you do Christmas baking? I will be doing that next week. Because tonight is um, my last in-person class here for the year. Tomorrow is my seniors class at the seniors apartment complex. So I can focus on house stuff. I've got my House is all decorated upstairs. All right, so we're gonna add some shadow to the bottom. So we're gonna take the light gray granite and we're just going to doesn't matter in my opinion 
do it however you want. But it just helps to ground that image to have that little bit of shadow happening. I'm gonna extend that. There. And, um, all right, so this is Flirty Flamingo. I'm not keen on that. So how about we give her, she's gonna have a green. I don't want red. So let's give her a green collar so she's matching the present because I just wasn't fussy on how that flirty flamingo looked. There we go. I think that's a little better. And if you find that your shadowing is a little heavy, um, I've showed you this before, just come in with your color lifter and soften those lines just like that. If you want a little pinker on the um, ear, you can come back in and just add a little bit more there, maybe a titch more down here. Just add a little, little bit. Okay, so we are going to um, use some dimensionals. We're gonna pop this up. So I've got an almost completed. Oh, let's snip these. All right, bring you back out, sorry about that. I just hit the camera stand a bit. All right. Using up all my little bits. And then one there and one there. All right. So I'm pe peeling off all my background, my background, my backings off of the dimensionals. Center that. And then this is centered just like that. And before I push down, I just got to make sure I am. That looks good. Now, for cutting this down, all you're going to do, I use the Versamark and my white embossing powder. So... We are just going to snip this down to a more manageable. So I'm going to come in here like this. And I'm not going to keep going across because that's an awful lot. I don't want to accidentally cut where I might cut into some of the words. So if I do this and cut it down so it is more manageable, and you don't have to cut straight, it's okay because the letters, the way it's drawn, it's not straight. So season can come off. And now we have a much easier piece um, to cut because it's smaller and we've got that excess off. You could use your trimmer 
if you're really good at cutting. So that's going to get glued right there. Then let's cut this down so that it is tidy. And that is going to go up here and then season. A little wonky there. So there we go. Get rid of all this. Now we're going to bring in our mini dimensionals. Actually, this is going to get glued on. Whoops, and I just I just got glue on my thumb. All right. So gift wrapping is going here. And like I said, it doesn't have to be straight. You're cutting. It's a-okay to have it a little wonky because the writing is wonky. It's like um, whimsical. So we need a couple mini dimensionals on here. One and two. Peel that off. And that, I put my reverse tweezers away so I need them to here. Oh, that's a little crooked. There we go. And then the last one. One and two. I love that we have the dimensionals in the two different sizes. And so you're not having to cut down the big ones. These little ones are just the perfect size. So then season is going to come right here. And we're not done. We need to add a little bit of something else. I mean, it's super cute, but you know what? I think this is just that little bit cuter. So I'm going to add a little dot of glue there, little dot of glue there, and one here, because I like to make sure my embellishments stay. And this is all... I've been cutting into my, this is the, um, this is not what they are. It says the red and green adhesive back pearls. They are not, they are the festive pearls. And they, um, these are carrying over. Yay, I love these. So we're gonna, we're doing the silver. And I think it just adds that little bit more to it. So these are real red, soft, uh, succulent, silver, and gold. But I think it just adds that little bit more to the card. And then that sparkle from the ribbon adds that little bit more as well. Super cute. So here we've got the flirty flamingo. Here we've got the green, the um, shaded spruce, and then this just the two paw prints, and then this, the, they're walking across the bottom. Super cute, I think. Um, Jeannie thinks it's cute. Sylvie thinks it's cute. I am so glad. So if you've got this set, that's a fun way to uh, create a card. If you don't have this set, think about with the measurements and the supplies I've used, um, what could you use of your supplies to substitute in there, substitute out your colors and all that kind of stuff. But um, adorable, I think. Super duper cute. All right, yeah, it is. When I look up, it's very dark. I do apologize. Oops, and I just turned off the one, my one lamp. Um, yeah, the color is, 
it's dreary here today. What can I say? <laughs> it's, it's not a bright, shiny day. So that is all for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, you love it, Marina. And Christy says it's super cute. Great. Um, yes, it is. Uh, I think the, the kitty cat, you know, was causing some issues. So the, the little dog thought that she should just, um, wrestle that dog, cat back down into, um, tie it up and get it to behave. <laughs> so anyway, that's all for me today. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a great Wednesday and I will see you next week. Have a great rest of your week. Have a great weekend and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye for now.